Are you tired of having your GoPro footage look like this? And you want it to look like this? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about setting up your GoPro so you can have your videos look just like the advertisements. Now, for those of you that don't know, I run a dirt biking channel here and everything we do is on a GoPro. Now, we've been using GoPro since the GoPro Hero 2, so we've been using them for quite some time and we've learned a lot about these cameras and everything I'm gonna tell you today is gonna to save you a lot of trial and error, playing with your cameras, trying out different settings, different things in post-production. We're gonna show you everything you need to know to set up your GoPro so you can get the best shots out of it. Now, when it comes to very first setting up your GoPro, before we even touch any settings, the way that you're gonna be mounting this is gonna be one of the most important things you do when you're setting up your GoPro. Now my preferred way of mounting the GoPro is going to be onto my chin. This way not only can I see if the camera is live and recording, I can see how much battery is left, how much SD card room there is left, and it just gives you a great point of view. Now I use the ProShot mount here on my helmet and this has become my favorite way to mount a GoPro. Now the reason that this is my favorite way is that I can just push the camera on, rotate it up, and it's in the perfect angle, the perfect position every single time I go out and ride so I don't have to mess with it and make sure I have the right angle. That's huge and it makes it so much easier when I want to go out and record is to just throw the camera on there, click record, and I don't have to think about anything. Now, when we're talking about video settings, this is my custom settings that I run here. So I'm always running in a 2.7K at 60 frames per second, and I'll get a touch on later why I specifically record in 2.7K, as well as in the lens, we're gonna use SuperView to give you that widest perspective. Here, I've tried every single different angle, and they all give you something slightly different. Now, preferred one for me is SuperView, and I'll go ahead and we'll throw up on screen here a couple different views of what it could look like with the different lens options. Now, I just prefer the way SuperView looks as you're riding through the trails and the trees are whipping past the edge of the camera in the super view it gives you this sense of speed which you just really don't get in any of the other lens views now when it comes to hyper smooth i just like having it in the on position and not in the boost what i found is when you do run it in boost is it ends up over stabilizing and you just get this weird stutter in top of your video because your helmet is moving around when you're riding so much so for that reason i leave hyper smooth in just the on position and this gives me the best quality uh, for smoothness in the video now once we get into the pro tune section our bit rate is going to be set to high we want the maximum amount of bit rate to have the most amount of information in the video file so we get as crisp as a video as we could possibly get. And as for shutter speed, I leave shutter speed at automatic because I like riding anytime from in the morning to afternoon into the dark and evenings. All right, let's go ride off into the sunset on our chariot, boys. And uh, we need a variable shutter speed for that to be able to accomplish that. Now for EV comp, this one can kind of be a little bit tricky as it depends on what the light is out like outside. So if you have an overcast, super overcasty day and it's pretty dark outside, I'll usually leave the EV comp around zero. Now if it were golden hour, we'd be putting it down to like a negative 0.5, but if it was direct sunlight in the middle of the day at mid daylight, it's gonna be about a negative 0.1 to help reduce the intensity uh, that it's not over exposed during the midday light. Now as for white balance, I also like to leave this at auto because we have a lot of different changing throughout the day from the sunlight into the shadows and from morning time into the evening time. So I like to leave white balance at auto so it's not making it too warm or too cool and changing it rapidly as we go in and out of the sunlight. Now for ISOs, I like to set the maximum to 1600 so that it doesn't overcompensate when it does get dark in the shadows. What you'll find is if you set the ISO too high, when you get into those shadows, your video is gonna become extremely pixelated. Now for sharpness, I like to leave the sharpness on high as I usually am not adding any extra sharpness in post-production, but I like to leave it high for that sharp, punchy look. Now for color grading, we always leave it in the flat color and not the GoPro color because we do our own color grading, which if you want a quick rundown on that, we'll be showing that later in the video, how you can quickly color grade your video to make it look extra crispy and really nice. So for that reason, we're gonna leave it on flat. Now you could leave it on GoPro color if you don't wanna be doing any color grading, but your colors aren't gonna be that accurate and they're gonna be a little wonky and not ideal so I definitely recommend if you can to go over and color grade your video instead of using the GoPro color file. Now when it comes to the raw audio the wind section um, I don't necessarily use either of these as you guys will be able to see we use the media mod now if you want good audio coming out of your camera you're definitely going to want to pick up one of these media mods it's just an absolute night and day difference so in conjunction with using the chin mount and the media mod and being able to select to use the rear microphone the rear microphone is positioned right where your mouth is so you can pick up really 
good voice audio of you talking while riding and uh, it's very easy to hear someone and you get great audio quality out of it and I've been very happy with the media mod. Uh, the standard audio you get out of the GoPro without it is just not good at all and uh, it's always got wind noise in it but with this with the wind sock on here with the media mod the wind noise has been kept to an absolute minimum and the audio has been really really great out of this camera. So now we once we hop over onto the computer side of things and we're in our editing software we're using Adobe Premiere here. Now when we spoke about it a little bit earlier and why I record in 2.7k and not 4k is that this can really help with your editing time so if you're recording at 2.7k it's a little bit smaller file sizes so if you don't have a super crazy beast computer you can edit the video clips a little bit easier as well as we can just scale it up to 4k and then it still plays in 4k on YouTube and you're still going to get the VP9 bitrate on YouTube which we'll talk about a little bit later so the way that we're going to be able to upscale our 2.7k or you could even upscale your 1080p footage to 4k so you can get that VP9 bitrate on YouTube which once again we'll talk about in a second here is we're just going to drag in our 4k clip so which is our GX clip here we have showcased down in the bottom which is our old riding clip but it's in 4k and then all we're going to do is take our 2.7k clip we're going to drag it after now you'll see that the box is a little bit smaller than the one at 4K, that's because it's at 2.7K and it has not been upscaled. Now to upscale it, it's really simple. All we gotta do is right click on the file and we're just gonna scale it to frame size and boom, just like that. Now it is scaled to 4K and now the clip is in 4K. So there's a simple way we can save some space on SD card, make it way easier to edit on your computer. Once we've done this, we wanna make sure that when we go to export it, the video still looks as beautiful as in, and as crisp as it does on the computer. So now we know it looked beautiful in the camera, we know it looks beautiful here on our editing program but usually this is where it goes from looking really good to you go to upload it to YouTube and now all of a sudden it just looks like crap and it's all washed out and looks pixelated and this has to do with our bit rates so this is where this is the secret sauce right here that I, I learned the hard way and it took me a long time to figure this out and we're going to throw this up on the screen and check this out now this page right here is YouTube's recommended video bit rates for standard definition uploads and HDR uploads. Now the GoPro that we're shooting with here is not shooting in HDR. So we're gonna look into the SDR uploads and if we look at for 4K and we're shooting at 60 frames per second, we're gonna wanna make sure our export bit rate is from 53 to 68 megabytes per second. So as we raise the number of megabytes per second in our bit rate, the better quality we're gonna get. Now it does cap out a certain point, so you can't just put it at 1,000 megabytes uh, and export it there. You could, but the file size also gets dramatically larger as you increase that bit rate on your export. So what you need to know is for the different resolutions that you export it at, here are the different bit rates you're gonna need depending on what frame frame rate you're shooting that video at. Now to be able to do that, we're just gonna come over here into our Premiere Editor and we're gonna go into our export and this is where you're gonna wanna set up the proper exporting settings here. Now this is something that's super duper overlooked here. So the first thing that's most important is that we got the correct 4K export basic video settings which is gonna be 6840 by 2160 which is the pixel count and we, that's 4K. We're gonna make sure our frame rate's locked in at that 59.94. We're gonna have render at maximum death checked and turned on. We're gonna make sure we have software encoding set on to high. And here is the most part. This is the crucial part that everyone seems to miss out on. And this is the most important part into making sure that your video comes out super crispy. And when it goes to YouTube, it has its best chance possible of looking as beautiful as possible. So here is our bitrate encoding. So what we're gonna do is you have a CBR and VBRs. Now what is the difference between those? CBR simply means constant bitrate and VBR is a variable bitrate. So in a constant bitrate, it's gonna give it one flat bitrate across the video, whether there's lots of action happening or barely any action happening. So what we are gonna be doing is we're going to be doing a variable bitrate with a two pass meaning it's going to go over the video once and check it out and render it and export it and check out the bit rates and then it's going to go over a second time and it's going to be looking for those spots that are really high action packed which is normally when you get that high pixelation which makes it look crappy when you're flying through the trails so that's why we want to make sure we're doing the two pass and we're going to set our target bit rate at that magical number 68 megabits per second and we're going to set that maximum bit rate to 68 megabits per second and then this is what's going to give you that best look when you go 
and upload it to YouTube. Now, a little bit earlier, we we're talking about that VP9 codec. Now, what is this exactly? Well, on YouTube itself here, and this is what an example of one that is not VP9, and this is the AVC codec. So pretty much YouTube will assign either one of two different codecs to your YouTube video. Now, generally speaking, if you have a small channel and you're only recording in up to 1080p HD and you're not uploading something in any higher than that, like in 1440p or 2.7K or 4K, they're by default, they're usually gonna give you the AVC codec. Now, why would they do that? Because it's gonna save space in their server. On YouTube servers, they're gonna give you the AVC codec, which makes your video size smaller so they don't have to store as much storage. You want the VP9, you have video that's just at 1080p, they're gonna give you the AVC codec. Now, the secret way to get that VP9 codec, there is a couple different ways. The first way is the easiest way, which I've shown you guys, is upscaling your video. If you upscale it to at least 1440p, uh, then you will get that VP9 codec. Now, how do you know if your videos are actually getting the AVC codec or the VP9 codec? It's really easy. We're gonna come onto a video just like this one here. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of that pixelation going on to it. It doesn't look, I've seen worse videos, but it doesn't, it's, it's missing out on free friggin' awesomeness that it could be getting in this video. And the simple way we're gonna check what codec that they've given you on any given video is we're just gonna pause the video here for a second. We're gonna right click we're gonna come down to stats for nerds. And inside of stats for nerds, you can see in the codex that they've given this video the AVC1 codec. So we know that they've given you the smaller codec, which is the lower bit rate, which is gonna make your video kind of look like a potato, even though it could have been recorded and shot in a really nice quality. And it looks super awesome when you're recording on your GoPro, and then you go to upload it to YouTube, and now it looks like a potato. Now here we have my video, and if we go ahead and click the stats for nerds, you can see that they've assigned us that VP09 codec because we've uploaded in 4K. Now, we didn't record a 4K, but we upscaled from 2.7K up to 4K, and then they gave us this VP09 codec, and our video looks freaking awesome, super beautiful, and amazing. Now, when it comes to color coding your GoPro footage, this is how we can do it really, really simply, really easily. First thing is we're gonna come down into our project browser. We're gonna go to this little new item page. We're gonna make an adjustment layer. Yep. It's set it for 4K. We're gonna put it on top of all the videos. Say you had a whole bunch of videos along the track. You're gonna drag them over this purple adjustment layer over all of it. We're gonna make sure we got it highlighted and clicked. We're gonna go over to our color tab and we're just gonna give it a basic, uh, our basic color profile that we like to do on our videos, which we're gonna add a little bit of contrast to it, make it a little bit darker. The dark is more dark. We're gonna add a little bit of saturation here to it. That makes the greens and everything, the colors more vibrant, alive. And then what I like to do is to come down into our cues in the hue versus saturation is I like to make three dots. And then we drag our center dot up. And what this is doing is making just specifically the green color more punchy so our bushes become more punchy. And then because our dirt bike is red and I like the red to really stand out on our dirt bikes, we're gonna come over to the red profile. I'm gonna put a dot there, a dot right at the edge, dot right at the edge. We're gonna grab the red color and we're gonna drag the red color up and that's gonna make our red of our dirt bike much more punchy. Now watch what happens, unedited with no color editing, and then we put all the color on there and boom, look how much more alive that video comes just for some simple color grading that took us maybe five seconds. Makes an absolute huge difference and makes it look so much freaking better. So now you guys have learned everything that I know about making your GoPro footage look sick. If you got any questions, make sure you drop them down below and I'll be for sure to answer them and help you guys out. If you guys learned anything new during this video, make sure you go down below, click that like button, click subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.